Hey everyone, it's Audrey, and this video is all about my very general plant care routine. It's been a bit of an adjustment getting into a proper routine ever since I moved into this apartment versus my last one. And I'm not an expert or anything, just a plant enthusiast trying their best. But I thought I would share some tips that have helped my plants survive, and I also felt inspired to talk about this after I took a class about houseplants on Skillshare, the sponsor of this video. In case you haven't heard of it, Skillshare is an online learning community with tons of inspiring classes taught by other creatives on pretty much whatever skills or interests you want to explore. The class that caught my eye was this one called Happy Houseplants, Caring for Your Plants and Learn with a Sill by botanist Chris Satch. I actually follow the company The Sill on Instagram, so I was instantly drawn to it. Other than the fact that I just love watching videos about plants, this class was pretty comprehensive. Some of the information I already knew, like watering technique and pruning leaves, but there were quite a few pieces of advice that I had no idea about, like targeting issues due to a certain leaf color or leaf orientation. So I'm probably going to try some of the techniques I learned, and if you're interested in taking the class, the first 1000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare's premium membership. Afterwards, it's around $10 a month. Let me know if you sign up, if you like it, and let's get into the video. First things first, I want to preface this by saying that if your plants are healthy and doing well, I personally don't think you need to change up whatever you're doing. There's been so many times where I've gotten advice from other people saying to do this, do that with my already healthy house plants, then I'll do it, and then my plant will die. So please take any advice you get from anyone, including me, with a grain of salt because only you really know what your plant situation is. You know what the light, water, humidity, air circulation, and temperature is like in your home all day, all year round. So unless I'm having a very particular issue, I've learned to just leave my methods as is, which leads to this tip. Get to know your plants and environment. When I first started my little plant collection, I was gifted a lot of plants from friends and family. I bought whatever I thought looked pretty at the flea market without any regard as to what would work in my home or with my schedule. Many dead plants later, I learned that you need to know in advance what plants you can handle. Some plants need a lot of attention and care. Others I can leave alone for weeks without doing anything. And luckily my cat just doesn't care about plants, she completely ignores them, but that might not be true for all. So doing all your research before making any plant purchases will save you a lot of money and time. When it comes to watering, I used to do this thing where I would have a designated day every week that I watered all the plants at the same time, and as my plants have grown, I've kind of grown out of that as well. Different plants vary in how often you need to water them. The kind of plants I have in my home typically need to be watered every like one to two weeks or so, and the current amount of plants I have is a number I can monitor easily. Day to day, I can just look around and see what needs to be watered. If the leaves are really wilted and I haven't watered in a while, that's usually a sign I need to. And I like to water my plants from the top. I'll fill up my watering can with tap water. I know some people will filter theirs, but I honestly never do because I never saw a difference. And then I'll water the soil evenly until I can see some water coming out of the drainage hole at the bottom of the pot. All of my plant pots have drainage holes in them. That's way easier for me to manage than having to eye the correct amount of water. You definitely don't want your plants to be sitting in a puddle of water, otherwise the roots will rot. Some people put lava rocks in their decorative pots. Um, I just prefer to do it this way. You can also try bottom watering. Just fill your saucer with water, let it absorb, and then check to make sure the soil is moist. Supposedly this is better for your plants, but I find this way more inconvenient and time consuming and really messy. I also don't think it's the greatest method for really big plants that need a lot of water. Totally just preference though. Another sign that a plant needs watering is if the top soil is really dry. I'll just use my hand and feel around a bit deeper into the pot. If it still feels wet or moist, I won't water. If it's dry, I will. Another indicator is if you lift your pot up and it feels very light, probably needs water. This is very basic advice, I could talk about this for way longer, but looking for signs of whether or not you're overwatering or underwatering sometimes look the same. Wilting, slow or no growth, curling leaves, but for me, usually if I notice yellowing, mushy roots, lots of bugs or smells coming from the soil, that's due to my overwatering. Thinning leaves, really dry soil or leaf drop is usually from underwatering. If you're still having plant issues after adjusting your amount of watering, you might not have the right humidity levels. I don't have a humidifier, it's very warm all year round where I live, and I usually just group my plants together hoping that that will increase the humidity. 
Something I also do is mist my plants, and I've heard conflicting ideas about this. Some people think it does help, others think it doesn't. I personally still mist my leaves, but I also do this in addition to wiping the leaves down with a soft towel afterwards. After one of my plants got spider mites, I started to do this every so often so I could keep better track of pet infestations. Obviously all plants need sunlight, and that also depends on what kind of plant and lighting you have in your home. A big selling point for me moving into this place was that the living and dining room have so many windows, three of them being south facing windows which get a lot of direct and indirect sunlight all day long. While I try to pay attention to the kinds of lighting recommended for different types of plants I have, like low to high light, I've also become very experimental when it comes to my placement and will move them around depending on how they're doing. Some signs of not enough light are droopy leaves, stunted growth, leggy stems, or like a dull yellow coloring. Alternatively, signs of too much light are crispy or brown tips, brown patches, or dead leaves. Sometimes the leaves will also become sun bleached or really pale due to sun damage. Wilting or leaf yellowing of newer leaves I think is also an early sign. Basically, if I see any of these signs, I'll switch it up and try moving my pots around. Other than what I've mentioned already, there are a few things I like to do to keep my plants looking the best they can, one of them being to prune any dead leaves. If I see any brown leaves, I'll take some pruning shears and just cut them off. Just looks nicer that way, and supposedly leaving on any dead matter just takes away energy and nutrients that could be better used on the healthier parts of the plant. Another thing that I wanted to mention is propagating. I've touched base on this before, but I grow a lot of plants that I have from the cuttings of my existing plants. Just a quick demonstration, I propagated this cutting from my pothos and I just did that by taking my shears and cutting right at the node and sticking that in water. You can change the water after a few days or just top it off as it starts to lower, but I find that if the water is clear and free of any algae or fungi, you can just leave it as is. Roots will start to grow and eventually you'll have a pretty decent root system going. I have a few cuttings that I either snipped myself or accidentally broke off like this monstera cutting. I used to plant all these cuttings in soil once the root system developed, but I've been experimenting just keeping them in water indefinitely, and so far so good. Sometimes I give these away to friends, or if I have a plant that I don't think is going to survive, I'll do this so I can try again with a new cutting. Lastly, repotting plants, and this is another thing that I found conflicting information on. Demonstrating with my Monstera, I've had this plant for maybe 8 months now, and I've kept it in the plastic nursery pot this whole time. I've heard several arguments on this, that you're not supposed to do this, that you're only supposed to keep it in the plastic pot until the plant gets used to your environment, and like I said before, if my plants are healthy and growing, I just continue to keep them the way they are until I notice a problem. This had outgrown its nursery pot and had become root bound at this point, so I knew it was time to place it into something bigger. I carefully removed it from the original pot, broke up the roots a little, and I just used potting soil for all my plants. As for fertilizer, I've tried rice water, leftover hard-boiled egg water, banana peel tea, and used coffee grounds. I just mix a little bit of this into the soil and then layer the larger pot with it before placing my plant in the center, making sure the roots are evenly covered and that the soil is properly packed into the pot. Once that's done, I'll just water it, and sometimes it's easier for me to just water my larger plants like this one in the shower. I let it drain properly and enjoy its new home. So I think I'm going to end this video here. If there's something I didn't mention, feel free to leave any questions in the comments. I'll try to answer or you can let me know what your favorite plant care tip is. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!